So here we're going to um, find the points of intersection for the graphs of these two equations. So it says write the points in polar form. So if these are both radiuses, then you want to see where these two things are equivalent to each other, which means theta would equal 9, okay? And since you already know that r is equal to 3, then you have your two values there. You have, um, you have 3 and 9, and then you also have, remember that 9 goes all the way around. So here's your radius of 3, which is an eccentric circle going this way, and your theta is 9. 9 divided by pi is like 2.8 pi. So it's like one whole way around 2 pi, and then a little bit less than 1, one pi. So it's about right here. So if you've got this polar axes going in this direction, okay? Um, this is theta equal to 9. So if you go out 3 and then go the angle theta equal to 9, you land here, okay? But if you go out 1, 2, 3, negative 3, and then go the measurement of 9, you end up here, which is the second point. Okay? Remember, or you can do different variations of it, right? You could have gone negative and then gone um, basically pi and then a 9. So 9 plus pi. Or you could have gone um, positive and then gone pi around and then a 9. Okay, so remember these are the same point and these are the same point. Typically they want these guys, but just so that you knew that there was another equivalent form, I went ahead and wrote those in there. Now for arc length of a polar form, here's a theorem. It says f is continuous function whose derivatives are continuous. The length of the graph of r from theta equal to alpha, theta equal to beta, is this formula here. So this is how to find the arc length in polar curve form, okay? So we have here, we have our thetas already set up, um, and we have r, r is equal to 6, and so we're going to go ahead and use this formula to plug it in here. Now in order for me to do it, I need to have r squared and then dr d theta squared. Well, if I take the derivative of r with respect to theta, it's just a constant, and the derivative of it is 0. So I get that s equals from 0 to 2 pi, the square root of r squared plus dr d theta squared d theta. So I end up with from 0 to pi, 2 pi of 6 d theta, which means I end up with 6 theta from 0 to 2 pi, which means I end up with 12 pi minus 0, or just 12 pi. Now if we do the last example, it says find the length of the curve over the given interval. So here you have a little extra variable in there. Just remember it's just an, like a constant, okay? So if I find dr d theta, theta is my variable, this is just a constant. So 6a times the derivative of cosine theta, which is negative sine theta. So you get negative 6a sine theta. And if I plug that into my formula, from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, square root of r squared plus dr d theta squared. So we get... Let's see here. So we get 36a squared cosine squared theta 
plus, because negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36, a squared sine squared theta, d theta. And I can factor out that 36a squared And we know from our Pythagorean identities that sine squared plus cosine squared is just one. So really I just have the square root of 36a squared, which is just 6a. Now remember, this is like a constant so when you integrate a constant, you just end up multiplying by the variable you're integrating with respect to. So we end up with 6a times pi over 2 minus 6a times negative pi over 2, which gives me 3 pi a plus 3 pi a, which is 6 pi a or 6a pi, same thing. Um, if you're doing this in the computer, it should accept either version.